Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just want to come before you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We just humble ourselves before you and we desire, O oh God, that you will meet us, O oh God, in every way. Fill us with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding that you may cause us to walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bearing much fruit in every good work, increasing intimately in the knowledge of God, strengthen with all power according to your glorious might, for patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share the inheritance of the saints. We just want to offer this Sunday service to you, Father. We desire that you will be known, that you will continue to teach us your ways, O God, that you will be magnified, be exalted, and be glorified in our midst. Lord, I fully entrust myself to your keeping, O God, for you are my stay and my support. I'm trusting, O God, that you will pour your strength upon me, the capacity, O God, to finish this message. I'm not here, O Lord, for mere words, but with the demonstration of the power of your Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that you are my strength, you are my power, you are my anointing. That's why you alone deserve the glory and the honor and the thanksgiving. I ask, O God, that you continue, Lord, to speak to your people. Increase the measure of your light in our hearts that we will continue, Lord, to walk in the light. Father God, I thank you, Lord, even now for the victory, for the power, the glory, and Lord, for everything that you will do. For truly, your Holy Spirit is already moving in our midst. We give you thanks once again. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So good morning once again. We just want to apologize. We were hacked earlier. And uh, na daw po ngayon yung um, nahak ang Zoom. So we just continue to ask for the precious blood of Jesus Christ to cover us so that the enemy cannot really come in and really have nothing on us because we know we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So right now, I'll be preaching about the symptoms of pride. Very interesting topic, okay? Uh, kasi akala natin that pride is all about being arrogant. But there are manifestations of pride that we are not aware. Uh, we know that the mandate of my life is to continually to learn the ways of God and to impart that to teach the people of God the ways of God. Because it's only when we know and walk in the ways of God that the presence of God will continue to increase in our life. And then what? They'll continue to witness the glory of God. That's what the prayer of Moses and that's the desire of my heart. So that is the mandate of the church. Continue to teach the people the ways of God. Because when you really walk in the ways of God, you are walking in the light, the wisdom of God. So you grow in the wisdom as you apply what you have learned and what you have accepted. Kaya importante po, matutunan natin. This is just a, uh, a few examples, but there are so many manifestations of pride. So ito po yung mga common. Kaya pag natutunan natin to, then let us be conscious. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, di ba? So word niya, guard your heart. So we need to really guard our hearts, okay? So... Sabi dyan, Proverbs 8.13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So yung evil na yan, it encompasses the great aspects of our daily life. Okay? How you tolerate sin, how you deal with people. So marami pong uh, aspeto yung evil na yan. So for us to really hate evil, so we need to have the fear of God. In the Proverbs, you will find out that the fear of God will bring about life, honor, and riches. So that's why I always ask, Lord, fill my heart with the fear of God because I want to be filled with your life, with your riches, and with your honor. So if you're familiar with the word of God, you know kaagad ko ano yung, what is missing in your life and you need to ask that. Remember, sabi rin sa word, you do not have because you do not ask. We need to ask what is amiss in our life. Then sabi dyan, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. So when you have the fear of God, ayaw mo yung arrogance, yung evil way. So you need to discover what are the evil ways and the perverse mouth. So yung mga salita natin, ingatan po natin yung mga lumalabas sa bibig natin. So especially sabi ko nga sa inyo, as a Christian, dapat hindi na tayo, wala nang naririnig na bad language sa buhay natin. So even yung pagmumura, especially yung pagsisinungaling. So, what else? Yung perverse mouth. Siyempre, yung mga jokes. 
and pagbobola, everything that you try to flatter people to really receive their uh, affirmation, parang nabobola ka to be accepted, hindi rin po, that is also uh, an evil way, okay? When you tolerate sin inside your house, that is an evil way. So, importante po na tayo po ay matutunan natin what are the evil ways na uh, as we read the word of God, we will learn the ways of God. Now, saan ba nag-umpisa yan? Pride na yan. Because that's the original sin. Sa Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, Satan wanted, uh, sabi dyan, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. So, Satan originally was named Lucifer. Okay? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So, if you notice, si Lucifer, uh, anong napansin natin dito, puro I, I, I. He, he doesn't hate God. You know, uh, at first, he doesn't hate God. What was really uh, the, uh, the manifestations of the pride? He wanted more what he, uh, where God has placed him, parang, Mas gusto niya, mas uh, higitan pa yung natatanggap niya. Kasi hindi naman niya sinabi na, na I, will, ano, I will exceed the most high. Ang sabi lang niya, I will be like the most high. Okay? So, ano yun? That is envy and jealousy. So, the original manifestation of pride is envy and jealousy. So, uh, in other words, Satan wanted something for self that God knew was not good for him to have. So in the same way na tayo po, when we really live in a discontented state in, of our life, napapansin natin na mayroon pa tayong hinahangad. Kasi nga, uh, because of part of our corruption of our nature, marami tayong hinu, uh, hinahanap gusto para ma-fulfill tayo without realizing that it is only through God that we can be filled, fulfilled, and satisfied. So, may gusto pa siya. Imagine, uh, sabi dyan, Satan wanted equal rights. Kasi hindi naman niya sinabi na lalagpasan niya ang most high. Sabi niya, I will be like the most high. So, if you notice, on these passages, meron nakalagay dyan na limang I. It's about I, 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 I like, I, I will, I will, I will, ganun. So, it's all about self, okay? So, Nag-demand siya ng equal voice and equal say with God. Kasi nakita niya, kasi ang original place ni Lucifer was to the very throne. Dito po yan makikita sa Ezekiel 28.13-15. to 15. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So in, in this passage, okay, uh, I was still wanted to confirm with the Lord. I believe... Kasi sabi dyan, you were in Eden. No one was in Eden except Adam and Eve. Okay? So at this state, hindi pa siya nag-fall. He appeared to be the angel yet, the archangel, to really minister to Adam and Eve. Okay? So, I mean, alam ko na uh, there are many doctrines na alam nila na Satan appeared in the Garden of Eden as Satan it's as a serpent. Pero sabi dito, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So ibig sabihin, yung description dito, hindi pa siya nagpo-fall. But uh, I will still confirm this, okay? I just want to share what I was really uh, studying on this matter. So sabi dyan, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So, it's Lucifer was a created being. Okay, so, next. You were the anointed cherub who covers. So, he was a cherub. You see, cherub, 
are very powerful angels. Okay? Kasi there are, uh, I believe, 13 heavenly beings that we are not aware of. Ang alam lang natin, angels. Meron pong archangels, meron cherubs. Pag pwede sinabi mong cherubim, that's the plural form of cherub. Meron seraph, seraphim. Mer merong, uh, merong the witness, the great one, and the holy one, the Lord of hosts. So, meron mga ganyan yan. So, hindi po po natin na pag-aaralan yan, but uh, that's not my topic today. Now, sabi niya, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. So, it speaks of the glory of God. Imagine the description of Lucifer. So, in other words, he was in charge of the music. The worship of God. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So, nakita natin dito, God has conferred already upon him the extraordinary beauty, what, wisdom, and charisma. And yet, hindi siya contento doon, okay? Hindi siya satisfied with all this. So, meron pa siyang gusto. He doesn't hate God, okay, on this, uh, uh, on this time. He was envious and jealous of what God, who God was. He forgot that she, he's, oh, he was only a created being. So makita natin, you cannot really, you know, outwit or even defeat your creator. Created being ka lang eh. Diyan nag-umpisa po ang pride, okay? So... So when God denied his, ano, uh, I think his prideful desire, the Lord brought him down. So this is where we found in the Bible in second heaven. Because it's a third heaven, this is where the throne of God is. Because it's saying as a Bible, there, were, uh, there, was, there is a three heavens, level of heavens. So one of these days, I will discuss this with you. I'll teach uh, uh, about this. He desires to be king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. So, makita mo, pride has torn and tormented Satan for eons of time. And yet, he will seek to run the world through a man he will produce in our days, the Antichrist. So, pag nakikita natin what's happening around us, it is uh, in preparation also for the coming of Antichrist because, you know, the economy is being uh, shaken throughout the world because of this COVID. But actually, actually, if you will study uh, on a deeper scale, it is just a conspiracy. It is all about preparing for the new world order para po to prepare also for Antichrist. Kasi Antichrist will be the one to rule the economy of the world. Kaya makita natin, I thought na it will uh, come uh, in 20 years, but it was hasten. So lahat to nangyayari na sa paligid natin. Kaya nga, importante that we can, we always walk with the Lord, okay? Now, so paano nangyari yun? So when he uh, deceived, uh, tempted even uh, Adam, at uh, doon po nag-umpisa lahat ang kasalanan. The, the nature, the sinful nature has been corrupted. Kaya tayo po, we have a corrupt nature, okay? So, Ang character natin, evil in a way. So, lahat po yan. That's why Jesus has to come. Now, ang unang-una dyan, na na-discuss dyan, na manifestation of uh, pride through the children of Adam and Eve, si Cain and Abel. So, sa so Genesis 4, 3 to 5. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his counter, uh, countenance fell. So, is that all? And then, pride is the root cause of envy and jealousy. So, sinabi ni Lord, kinonfront si Cain, ni Lord, okay? So, the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? So, makita natin from envy and jealousy, ano yung nag lumalabas? Galit. Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. So nakita natin, these are what? The manifested branches, bunga ng pride. Bakit nag yan sa jealousy and envy? So 
Huwag po natin i-deny na wala tayo niyan. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, in every circumstances, when everyone is put in the same uh, uh, situation, different po yung ating response or reaction to every situation. It's a matter of how we process uh, our hearts and our uh, how we deal with our uh, situation. Kaya importante po, pag kami nag-a-arise sa puso natin, ba't tayo nagagalit? Bakit tayo naiinis sa tao? Try to to what? Seek what is in your heart. Kasi importante po yun eh. Katulad niya, example, it is way, way back. That's why I, when you found out immediately what is wrong with your heart, why you, uh, you have that kind of behavior or attitude, then you can go to the Lord and ask for His help para, Lord, i-deal mo ito. Example, but way, way back, sabi ko nga sa inyo, when I was called, my sister-in-law in New York, Hey, uh, nagsisend siya ng money sa lahat ng pamangkin niya. So when I found out sa ibang pamangkin ko na she, she was sending mga $50, pero sa mga dalawa kong anak, $20 lang. Naiinis ako. Sabi ko, ba't ako naiinis? Alam mo yon kailangan ma-identify mo kagat eh. Ba't ka naiinis? May pinadala naman. So the Lord showed me, you see, when you're reading the Word of God, God will point what is wrong in your heart. Why are you reacting that way? So no, sinabi ni Lord, because of envy and jealousy. Sabi ko, Lord, nakakahiya naman. Bakit ako naiingit? Eh, nagpadala rin naman sa akin, sa anak ko. So sabi ko, Lord, mali ito, forgive me. But I cannot remove this sa heart ko. Hindi ko kaya. I can never change myself. So sabi ko, Lord, sanctify my heart, purify my heart, create in me a pure heart. I saw that in the Bible, kaya hinihingi ko yon. Then the second time, nagpadala ulit. So, mas malaki na yun sa pamangkin ko, 100, sa kanila, 20 pa din. But this time, it, it does not bother me. Sabi ko, wow, Lord, hindi na ako, wala akong inis, wala akong galit. Kasi, Inaamin ko sa harapan ng Diyos. You see, the problem with us, the reason why God cannot deal with our hearts, we are in denial. Parang pag sinasabi ni Lord, He's pointing something to us, ano sinasabi natin? Hindi, hindi ako nainggit, hindi ako nagsiselos. You see, when you deny, hindi makakilos ang Diyos. But when you open up and surrender what's in your heart and you be honest before God, then God can move in our hearts and then transformation will happen. Bakit? Kasi magsasubmit ka sa Panginoon. Lord, I, I confess that I have this and I cannot change myself, but it is you who will change me. Sabi mo, that I've been crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Hindi pa totoo ito. And I want the reality of this verse, that this verse will become flesh in my life. So, alam mo, nung the next time, nung nakalaya ako, sabi ko, ay, kahit magpadala, kahit wala na sa anak ko, kasi the next time, nagpadala siya sa pamangkin, sa mga anak ko, wala. And yet, walang dating sa akin, para wow, Lord, malaya na ako. So, when I got free, okay, I was set free, alam mo, nung next padala, ng uh, ng uh, uh, na sister in ko she sent $500 dalawa kong anak tag for 500 yung mga pamangkin niya nag 50 na lang so makita mo sometimes the blessings of god are already hindered because of our attitude in life yung inggit kasi at selos nakakahinder yan ng blessing because the root cause niyan is pride Kaya nga, i-identify nyo, bakit kayo naiinis pagka nabibless yung kapwa mo? Bakit ka naiinis pag yung kapatid mo nabibless? Kasi yan ang napapansin ko eh, pagka merong umaangat, Christians are not happy, di ba sabi ng Panginoon? Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Ano, mourn with those who are uh, sorrowful. Pero mas nagmo-mourn tayo when our kapatiran are mourning. It's sorrowful. We can really sympathize with them. But when they are happy and being blessed, parang, ay, thank God, pero in your heart, hindi ka masaya. Napapansin ko lang po yan, no? So sabi ko, Lord, what's wrong? Because we are still in denial that we have envy and jealousy because that is part of the corruption of our being. So pag tayo po, hindi tayo masaya sa mga natatanggap ng kapwa natin at la imbis na masaya tayo na, na iinis tayo, then you have envy and jealousy. And the root cause is pride. Okay? So, so 1 Samuel 18, 5 to 9. 
Ito rin po. And David went out wherever Saul sent him. And he prospered and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And it was satisfactory both to the people and to Saul's servants. As they were coming home, when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out of all the Israelite towns singing and dancing to meet King Saul with timbrels, song of joy, and instruments of music. And the women rep responded as they laughed and frolicked, saying, Saul had slain his thousand and David his ten thousands. Okay? And Saul was very angry. You see? Bakit? Nagselo siya. Kasi ang praises ng tao is towards David. So ano yung bunga? Anger. For the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me have ascribed only thousands. You see? He, he saw himself more above, okay? What more can he have but the kingdom and soul jealousy? You see? I, David, from that day toward. So, nakita natin dito, mga kapatid, what jealousy will bring about anger that will bring about what? Uh, murder. Just what happened to Cain. Diba? Pinatay niya si Abel because of jealousy and envy because of how God responded to their offerings. You see, Cain's offering was not accepted simply because his life was not pleasing before God. So in the same way in the New Testament, believers, whatever sacrifice you give to the Lord when your life is not acceptable before God, your sacrifices will not be acceptable before God. Because God is after our very life more than what we give and what we sacrifice. Okay? So, importante po yun. Then, in James 4, 1 to 4, What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? So, bakit may away? Di ba kahit sa family, nag-aaway-away, especially pag mana. Don't they come from evil desires, you see? Evil desires at war within you. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you do not ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You, adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I said it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you, you make yourself an enemy of God. So makita natin, bakit na may away? Because you want something na hindi mo makamtan, pero yung kapwa mo meron. And so ang gagawin mo, what? Sisiraan mo. Kasi minsan meron po mga counseling na ang problema ng mga mag-asawa, well, when the, uh, the, uh, yung couple, yung, isang, uh, yung asawa nasa abroad, nagugulat na lang siya na hindi na siya nagpapadala yung asawa. Nagpapadala na sa nanay o sa kapatid. Ano nangyari? Sabi na asawa. Kasi yung in-laws niya, sinisiraan doon sa asawa para sila ang humawak ng padala. E, right ng wife yun eh. You see, these are happening mga nangyayari yan sa family sa atin, sa, Pilipina, sa Pilipinas. Bakit? Nag-aaway-away ang mga in-laws kasi yung mother or the kapatid, sisiraan yung wife uh, sa asawa, tapos yung asawa hindi na magpapadala kasi yung asawa naniniwala. So makita mo, whether it's true or not, we need to come to the Lord. Bakit? Naiingit eh. Yan ang cause ng away sa loob ng pamilya, yung inggitan, magkakamag-anak. Kaya hindi mawala-wala yung galit, yung mga away-away. Kasi you do not have because you do not ask. At pag hiningi mo, may masama ka pang motibo. Di ba minsan meron din akong naririnig na uh, mga salita na, Lord, pagyamanin mo ako para pag yumaman ako, papatunayan ko sa mga yan na uh, yung mga nang-api sa akin. Alam mo mga kapatid, when you're at peace with God, wala ka dapat patunayan eh. Okay? So, importante po, when we ask God, it's something from a pure motive. Hindi yung parang tanggante. Okay? So, kailangan importante po, na ang hingin natin yung tama, yung uh, kung ano yung gusto ng Diyos para sa atin. Kasi pride po yan. Okay? So, sa James 3, 14 to 16, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, 
confusion and every evil thing are there. So, sinasabi po dito ako may inget at self-seeking, okay? Self-centeredness. And doon palagi ang gulo, confusion, and everything. And doon po lahat. Away, walang harmony, walang peace. Okay? So, ang sarap po kasi mamuhay sa isang bahay na walang gulo, walang away, walang argument. You see, I, I, I really rarely see a house that is harmonious na walang gulo. So, I pray as Christians, we aim to have that. You see, even among couples, eh, sa mga couples, okay, sa family life, uh, what causes a marriage breakdown? It is self-centeredness. So you see, the bottom line here is pride is self-centeredness. That's it. So if you want to get rid of pride, so be so other-centered, God-centered. So always uh, check your heart. And always, bakit ka nagagalit? Bakit ka naiinis? Imbis na you express that, magbilang ka. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Katulad ka po, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Magbilang ka din. Na bago ka magsalita out of your anger, magbilang ka rin. Pero this time siguro 10. Kasi mas, ma mas mahirap i-contain ang anger sa kaysa fear. Okay? Sa kaba. So, Bago ka magsalita, kasi pag nagsalita ka, hindi mo na mababawi yun. At pag nag-hurt mo na, it cause deep wounds sa mga tao. Kaya it's better, that's why God has given us two ears and one mouth. So that we will listen more and speak less. Yun po yun. Okay, so sa Proverbs 13.10, By pride comes nothing but strife, but with well advice is wisdom. So, importante po yung, yung uh, malaman natin bakit may gulo sa loob ng bahay. Bakit naiinis ka, nagagalit ka. It's all just pride. Self-centered. Okay? To remove strife, live in humility. We must major in humility if we want harmony. You know what it means to, be, to humble ourselves? How not to be self-centered? Magparaya ka. Palagi kang magbigay. Palagi kang, alam mo, magpakumbaba para lang walang gulo. You see, if one person is willing to humble themselves and not to fight for their right, then arguments will what? Diminish. That, ano yan? Mawawala. Kaya lang, kaya lang yung arguments, hindi, ma, hindi matanggal-tanggal. Kasi lahat tayo gusto natin patunayan, tama ako, tama ka, tama lahat. Kaya kung tama tayong lahat, di ta, walang gulo. Bakit may gulo? Kasi lahat mali. You know, the moral, the only one who has the moral authority to determine what is right and wrong in our life is God. Kasi tao na natakda ng tama at mali sa buhay natin eh. Ibalik natin yan sa Diyos, Lord. Ikaw lang talaga ang tama. Kaya nga, we live by faith. Okay, I will emphasize that later. We live by faith simply because iiwanan natin yung nakasanayan natin. So, importante po yan. That's why the just shall live by faith. So, mamaya, explain ko po yan, okay? Pride is a high opinion of oneself. So kung minamaliit mo yung kapwa mo, ma-pride ka. Looking down on others and their opinions. Para bang feeling mo lagi kang tama. Okay? If you're always right, you will never get along with anybody. Okay? Pride can be very rude. While a mark of greatness is the ability to receive from anyone any level. Okay? Pride makes a man very small. Kaya minamaliit. Kaya merong mga tao, uh, uh, tawag na ito, yung ano ba tawag sa, yung bang minamaliit nila yung kapwa nila. Okay? The way they help, the way they give, the way they ano, uh, deal with others, especially yung may hirap. Especially yung mga mayaman, hindi ko naman mina, nila lahat, no, naman pera. But you see, when you uh, see yourself above somebody, kasi you're financially well off, then may pride po yun. Huwag po natin isipin na, oy, ano, mataas ako. All blessings come from God. It can be taken from us anytime. Okay, so ano po yung another manifestation of pride? 2 Kings 5, 1-2 Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. 
He was also a mighty man, a valor, but a leper. Yun yung nakwento ko rin last week, di ba? And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. So, meron po silang servant galing Israel. So, si Naaman, commander of chief, high a position niya, pero leper siya. So, meron pong silang servant na nakuha from Israel na nagsabi sa kanya, next, na sabi sa kanya na meron pong ano, prophet sa Israel na pwede kang pagalingin. Okay? So, nung nalaman niya, pumunta siya sa Israel. Then, Naaman went with horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. Ito ba yung prophet? Okay? And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Okay? But Naaman became furious. Doon na galit. And went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could not I wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Galit na galit. Bakit? Okay. KSP eh. Hindi siya binigyan ng attention. So kung tayo po, hindi tayo nabibigyan ng attention at naiinis tayo, nagagalit tayo, that's pride. Hindi tayo nabate, hindi tayo na text, hindi tayo na replyan, naiinis tayo. Ano ba to? So ano yun? Pride. So mga KSP po tayo, may pride pa tayo. So wag po tayong KSP. If you de demand attention, So, pride is an absorbing sense of one's greatness and importance. Kasi, kaya gusto mo ng attention kasi ang feeling mo, importante ka. Okay? Because of this, a proud person is easily hurt and offended. So, mga kapatid, kung ikaw, oversensitive ka, may nasabi sa'yo, may nagawa sa'yo, at ikaw naman ay nag-react ka agad, Ano mangyayari? So it's proud. It's pride. When he is not treated just so, he's not the master of his emotion and is therefore weak. So the measurement, the barometer of a strong person is emotionally stable and strong. A lot of people are growing old, but not everybody's growing up. How do we know that we're growing up? Because we have what? A strong emotion. We are disciplined. We are controlled. Okay? Sa emotion natin. And then what? Importante po na our emotions are controlled. Kahit galit na galit ka na, but you continue to control yourself. That is emotional. Kasi po, napansin ko, madami pong high IQ but low EQ. You know what is EQ? Emotional quotient. Very low. Ibig sabihin, madaling ma-offend. Lagi kang nag-iingat ano yung sasabihin mo kasi ma-offend siya. Lagi kang nag-iingat kung anong i -re react mo kasi baka ma-offend siya. You're always walking on the glass para kang lagi kang uh, tumatawid sa alambre. Dapat po, when we're around people, they will be very comfortable with us. Ibig sabihin, they can be themselves being with you kasi hindi sila, hindi sila uh, worried na baka ma-offend ka. You know, see, ah, uh, Many times, alam niyo po, pagka during those mission times ko, when there are times na meron pong uh, naka-cancel, meron pong uh, uh, tawag nito, uh, hindi inaasikaso ng uh, host na mag-invite, di konti lang. So sabi ko, ah, okay lang. It, it, I can look over that eh. You can, if you can look over an insult and uh, no attention, no acknowledgement, nothing, then you can really, you have really overcome your emotional uh, ano, uh, desire. Yung kulang, kung kulang ka sa pansin, okay? There are times kasi, minsan may mga mag-asawa, especially the wife, would always come to me, Pastora, yung husband ko, hindi ako, hindi na ako nabibigyan ng attention, hindi na ako nailalabas, na i date Eh gusto ko yon. Sabi ko, alam nyo, as a Christian, hindi, ang marriage kasi it's not about You make me happy. It's about how can I serve you. Kaya lang because ang foundation ng marriages nowadays is 
make me happy, which is not right, okay? So, sabi ko, if the husband, maraming shortcomings, why don't you let Jesus Christ be your fulfillment, your satisfaction, so that you will not always look for attention from your husband? So, makita mo, hindi ka nagtatampo, hindi ka yung tahimik sa loob ng bahay kasi masama ang loob mo. You're ruining your life when you should be enjoying your life. So, kung hindi niya nabibigay, meron tayong God. You see? Kaya nga, uh, hindi po problema pagka wala po tayong attention from other people, walang acknowledgement. So, wala pong uh, tawag na ito. If people cannot give you affirmation, Kasi minsan ang problema natin, we try hugutin ang self-esteem natin, ang self-worth uh, self, uh, natin sa ibang tao. And we get frustrated about it. You see, no matter how many people look down on you, it will not affect you. Why? Because your identity is in Christ. Example po niyan. Ano? We started uploading my video uh, at the YouTube. Okay? Somebody called my attention. Sabi niya, what made you reverent? Okay, so may nag-question sa akin yan. Oh, sabi ko, well, it's just, it means lang na honorable. And I believe they put that name, that title in my name because they find me honorable. Sabi niya, well, you should do this, blah, 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 blah. Dami requirements. Sabi, that is your uh, church principle and your policy, but we don't have that. So sabi ko, okay, para lang hindi po tayo mas tambol. Kaya sinabi ko kay Julie, Julie, palitan mo na nga, wag na, wag na lang ako reverend, pastora na lang. Kung meron pang ma-offend na pastora ko, tanggalin mo na rin. It doesn't matter to me. Tayo lang yun eh. Ay, importante yung message, ma mapakinggan, di ba? Tayo kasi we're so conscious of how people look at you. Sabi ko nga eh, character is more important than reputation. Do not build your reputation. Give it to God and let God build that reputation because reputation is a very heavy burden to carry. Kaya nga hindi po natin pwedeng i-build yung sarili natin. Why? Because this is where we start. What? Being conscious of the opinion of others, how people look at you. Pag lahat ng motivation natin, gagawin natin, eh dahil baka ano yung sasabihin ng tao, that is pride. You're conscious of yourself. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, a pride is self-centered. If you're not conscious how people look at you, you why the key here is you know you establish yourself your identity with Christ. No matter how people look down on you, your worth is coming from the Lord. So no one can take that away because when people say oh, we, we don't like you, God loves me. We we don't want to respect you. God chose you. That is a respectable move of God. He he honors us by choosing us and allowing us to serve Him. That's why serving God is an honorable thing. Hindi naman lahat na natatawag. Hindi naman lahat binibigyan ng opportunity to serve God. That's why I am amazed how God, how come serving God is a struggle to many Christians. It's an honor. So symptoms of pride, desiring attention. Oversensitive, easily offended. So mga kapatid, be strong emotionally and let us not be easily offended. Alam mo, hindi ko naman sinasabi na hindi tayo masasaktan. I get offended, okay, once in a while. But I let it, I turn it to God, I cast all my cares. Sabi ko, Lord, na-offend ako, but I do not dwell on that offense. I don't want this offense to beat me, okay? I will beat this offense. By what? Ruling and reigning with Christ. Sat sabi kasi sa Romans 5, di ba? That we rule and reign here in this life through one man, Jesus Christ. So, we can rule over our emotion, our, our uh, oversensitivity by turning it to the Lord. Lord, I want to rule over this. I know that I am accepted and I am beloved of the Lord. So, I always declare in my morning, when I wake up, I always say, Lord, thank you. I'm highly favored. Okay? Now, so don't desire attention, acknowledgement, affirmation. Don't get your self-esteem from people except that when God uses you and when people reject you, it's okay. Because there are people whom God will send to your life who will really honor and respect you as well. You cannot please everybody. So, sa 2 Samuel 6, 2 to 3, ano po yung another symptoms? Uzas, long familiarity. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him. 
okay? With Baal, Judah to bring up from the ark of God, whose name is called by the name the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. So they set up the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ohio, Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And when they came to Nashon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. So, nakita natin dito kasi si... David, when he became king, yung Ark of the Covenant na ginawa ni Moses was in the house of Abinadab. Okay? So, gusto niyang kunin. Kasi king na siya, gusto niya na sa city of David. Kaya lang, ang dami niyang uh, pagkukulang dito kasi po, ang uh, Ark of the Covenant, ang law dyan, dapat Levites ang magkikeri. Inilagay nila sa uh, saan ito? Sa cart. Ang, nag, ang maghihila ay yung uh, mule yata. So, nagstumble. Anong ginawa ni Uza? So, syempre, parang gumalaw yung Ark of Covenant. So, uh, inabot niya yung Ark of Covenant kasi baka nga mahulog. And yet, what? Pinatay siya ni Lord. So, pag-iisipin mo, pag binabasa mo to ang, ang ano naman, para bang ang lupet, di ba? Parang, Lord, bakit napaka-stricto mo regarding this? Eh, mauhulog yung ko. Ano eh, yung ark? Why, why did you kill Uza? Kaya nga si David, nagalit siya. Parang, ano to? Parang ganon. Hindi niya alam. Uh, si David ang may pagkukulang dito kasi mali talaga from the start. Okay? So, ang ark kasi dapat um, kinakargayan ng Levites. Hindi yan sa cart. And secondly, the, the, the musicians were not uh, sanctified. Maraming namuhay ng kasalanan dyan. So talaga rejected. But the particular event na pinatay ni Lord ang U si Uza, is this is one thing that I have learned, okay? Si Uza kasi, anak siya ni Abinadab. So the Ark of the Covenant was with the Abinadab household. So familiar sila sa presence of God. Because the Ark of the Covenant is the symbol of the presence of God. What, wa, what was wrong with Uza? Okay? Si Uza, because he was familiar with the presence of God, he forgot na nagyabang siya na, hoy, kaya ko tong hawakan. Eh, hindi po allowed ang Levites humawak sa Ark of the Covenant. Ang allowed lang po niyan eh yung priest. Okay? So, what was the heart of Uza. He was prideful, presumptuous. Bakit? Familiar siya. Familiarity, di ba, breeds contempt. He was contempting the, the, the Ark of the Covenant dahil pinagmamalaki niya. Pinagmamalaki ni Uza dito. Oy, alam ko to. Ah, sa amin to eh. Alam mo yun. Nagyabang siya. In, the, in front of David the king, and then, this is the revelation of God, okay? And then, based on the uh, several commentary also. I, so, makita natin, na presumptuous siya. Medyo mayabang siya dito. Kasi familiar siya. So, paano po natin na-express yan? Sa ating uh, panahon ngayon. And this is the revelation of God. Please listen, Okay? Because this was God's revelation when I was really composing this message. People are familiar with the presence of God every Sunday in a Zoom service. And we take the presence of God lightly. During worship, what we do? We talk. During preaching, dahil hindi nakikita ang video, you stand. You do something. Tumatayo kayo, may ginagawa kayo, habang nakikinig kayo. And that familiarity with the presence of God breeds contempt before God and God is not pleased. I pray that the Zoom service will be honored because we honor God. Hindi yan, tatayo tayo, pupunta tayo sa CR. Prepare yourself, kaya like yung sinasabi, prepare yourself. When you hear the word of God, when the service starts, be sure that you're all attentive to the Lord because the Holy Spirit is moving. Hindi kakain, hindi what? Hindi tatayo. 
Hindi ko alam kung sino yung nire-refer ni Lord dito. But when God gave me this revelation, sabi niya, Grace, tell my people, do not disrespect my Holy Spirit. Because even if it is just a video, the Holy Spirit is moving in your heart. Respect the honor and respect the presence of God. Okay lang po, takas CR kung talagang hindi mo na mapigilan. Okay? But yung... Hindi ka naman puputan ng CR, tatayo ka, kakain ka, makikinig ka. That is contempt before God. And God doesn't want that. Buti nga, nasa New Testament tayo eh. Bakit? Baka, mata Baka wala na tayo lahat dito kung Old Testament tayo. Okay? So, it is important that we really honor God's presence. Pamunimunihin niyo po yan. So, hindi po pwede, when you are attending the sir, Sunday service, all attention to what God wants to speak to all of us. Amen po ba? So, yun po yung problema. Familiarity with the presence of God, we take it lightly. Wow, na-bless ako. Yeah, na-bless ka sa message. Nagandahan ka. Oo, oh, oh, ang galing. Kaya lang, anong ginawa mo throughout the service? Kaya nga, many times, hindi natin napapakinabangan ng salita ng Diyos dahil sa umpisa, mali na. You see, God honors those who honors Him. ba diba sabi nga niya, to those who come near me, I will show myself honorable. Ibig sabihin, yung pinatay din niya na sinabi niya dito eh, kahit yung kay uh, anak ni Aaron, pinatay niya. Bakit? Kasi they offered strange fire. So makita natin, we cannot take God's presence lightly. If we want the presence of God in our life, then honor Him. Especially when we, we are joining here. Alam mo po, uh, I can really, uh, uh, one thing that I'm really thankful about God is, uh, uh, kay Lord Dennis, he, how He really um, visit us every Sunday, the presence niya and the, the revelation that He would give us. Diba? So, sana honor din po natin ang Diyos. So, wag po tayong irreverent. Just like Uza. So, wag po tayong um, maging familiar. Alam mo, napakasarap sa presence ni Lord because one of this, uh, one time, at least last, last Friday, the reason why uh, when I preach about the importance of seeking the Lord, because Friday of that week, the Lord visited me powerfully. Talagang He came down and uh, nag-usap kami and then... Uh, that's the reason why that Sunday was powerful. It doesn't mean that it, today is not powerful. It's the same. Okay? God doesn't leave us nor forsake us. Okay, so Proverbs 16.2. People may be pure in their own heart, in, in His own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. So, yung motibo po natin, importante sa Diyos. Lahat tayo uh, nakikinig, pero ano po yung motibo natin? Uh, minsan, Mag-join, may mag-join. Tingnan ko nga, no, preaching, ano, message. Pero wala namang balak sumunod. So the Lord weighs the spirits. When our hearts are not pure in the eyes of God, our motives are not pure in His eyes, in His, uh, before Him, hindi natin pakikinabangan ng message. Kaya bihira ang Christians na lumalago, na babago. Kasi hindi, uh, hindi inaalaw ng Panginoon. You see, in 1 Corinthians 3, it is God, who makes us grow. Si Lord ang nagdedetermine sino yung lalago, who will move with Him uh, forward, at kung sino yung may stuck. At pag na-stuck po tayo where we are in our level of Christian life, then more or less, we will be drawn or be pulled down by the world, by every temptations that will come our way. Then finally, wala na tayo sa Panginoon. That is the danger. Yung bang, He will make you busy enough na wala ka ng time for, for, for him to hear. Kasi, alam mo yun, temptations eh. Andiyan yung business, andiyan yung, uh, andiyan yung uh, many things that will tempt us. Okay? Kasi wala doon yung grace to preserve us. You see, the grace of God that brings salvation to all men has appeared to all, to all men. Okay? What? It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly lust and that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. You see, the grace of God preserves us. That's why sabi ni Paul, I am what I am by the grace of God. 
What we are, what we have is by the grace of God. And God gives grace to the humble. Kaya nga, kahit ba you look humble and your heart is not right, you will not receive grace. And you will be pulled down by the world and by Satan. And these are the people, the Christians, who will be swayed by the Antichrist. You see, on the Bible, we can read in the Bible that even Christians and the elect will be deceived. Mismo si Lord na nagsabi niyan. At even... Sinabi dyan that many will turn away, apostatize from the truth. Kaya marami na po, what? Uh, nadadaya. So let us be humble before God, okay? So please, when you join the Zoom, honor God. What is the symp another symptom? Matthew 18, 21, 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Okay? So, so nakita natin dito, ano pala siya? Uh, mahirap gawin. Hindi yan lifetime, ha? Isang araw lang yan. Imagine, mayat maya. <laughs> Na-offend ka sa kasamahan mo. Eh, ano gagawin mo? You forgive. 70 times 7 is another way of saying, do not bother to count. Forgiveness is for our own sake as much as it is for our offenders. When we are unable to forgive, our hearts become infected with evil and bitterness. Unforgiveness is manifestation of pride. You cannot let go. Okay? So, by the act of forgiving, we are releasing others from the offense they have committed against us. Otherwise, we are keeping them as prisoners in our thoughts. As the prison keeper, we are in prison too. Prisoner din po tayo, preoccupied with the depths our captives owe us. Under the new covenant, Christ has made provision for the believer to be able to forgive and release others. So, for, kaya nga ang teaching ni Jesus Christ, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Hanggat hindi mo kaya, Harapin yung taong nakasakit sa'yo, hindi ka pa nakapatawad. There are times, yes, forgiveness is a process. Kung masyadong malalim ang sugat. Process po yan. But, there is a way out because grace is always present. Pagka madali kang ma-offend, wounded ka. May unforgiveness ka. Kaya andyan yung pride. Okay? Yung root. Pride cannot let go of an offense. Lagi mong sinasabi. Nire-recall. Alam mo, kasi yan yung ginawa ng ano. Yan ang ginawa niya, yung ginawa niya. Eh. When you let go, let go. Okay? A proud man demands vindication and justice for himself. Remember what I shared last week? May nagpapa-counseling. Sabi niya, I, 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 I was deprived of my promotion kasi siniraan ako, blah, 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 chismis. So sabi niya, Pastora, I'm asking for a justice from God. You see, sabi ko, are you sure you want justice? Sabi niya, yes. Why? Kasi na-deprive ako ng promotion. You see, mga kapatid, you cannot ask justice. Matakot tayo pag may tayong justice kay Lord. Why? And uh, sabi ko, ikaw mismo, ang papatawa ng justice. Bakit? Christian ka eh. And yet may kalive-in ka. And yet humihiki ng justice. Justice begins at the house of the Lord. So, ikaw ang unahin ng Diyos. Maybe because God allows that in your life na deprived ka because you have sin. You're nurturing sin in your life. So, wag mo sisihin yung tao. That is a one way that God is calling you. Calling your attention. Pride demands an apology for small offenses and also makes it hard for the offender to apologize. Minsan, di ba, magsasabi, magsasorry na ako, pero ayaw niya, ayaw niya ako usapin. So, you see, ano yun? Absorb yan with self. Okay? The proud person is unaware when he's injuring another. He makes it difficult to forgive because pride dwells on hurts. I am hurt. I'm hurt. Nasaktan ako. Okay? And let everyone know it too. Okay? So, I, I, I'll give you my uh, example, a few. Pero there are so many things that happened to me in the mission field. And God continued to use me, uh, bring greater influence. 
and enlarge my territory because I submit to God in all my offense. There was a pastor, we agreed to have a youth conference in one of the provinces of Bisaya, okay? But when I came to that place, I realized yung church na maliit for, for a venue. So I suggested to him, can we change venue? Anyway, I will be paying. So hindi siya kumiki po. Parang, sige, little did I know, kinansel niya sa lahat ng contacts niya. So, natuloy yung conference, pero sampu na lang. It should be more than 100. Kasi kinansel niya sa mga contacts niya. It's already been set up. And then siniraan niya ako, and then sabi ko, Lord, sampu na lang tong youth. Ang laki ng ginasus ko kasi yung duna ng paluto ng pagkain and di ang daming tira. E two days yon So sabi ko, I was hoping na he will change. Sabi ko, kapatid, can we really just for the sake lang marinig ng mga young people? Hindi, talagang wala, wala nangyari. In other words, I was hurt because of that happened. A few months after, that province was hit with a terrible calamity. The first thing I did is to look for him. Bakit? Gusto kong tulungan. So, nung na-appraise ko siya, sabi ko, Pastor, how can I help you? Sabi niya, Pastora, nahihiya ako sa'yo. Sabi ko, bakit? Sa nangyari? Huwag mong isipin yun. I'm here to help you. How can I help? Sabi niya, ito po yung sitwasyon namin. Magpapadala ako ng pera. And you know what I did? Binraso ko yung mayayaman ko kaibigan. Hindi ako humihingi sa kaibigan ko when it comes to my personal needs and to the ministry needs. But when for others, sabi ko, friend, can you help this pastor na hito ng calamity? Send directly the money to them. Huwag sa akin. So when he was, was recovered, naka-recover siya, nakatayo siya uli ng ministry, uh, we have a constant communication. Sabi niya, pastora, may conference po ako dyan sa Manila. Hindi ko po alam paano ko a-attend. Wala akong pantiket. No problem. I'll book you. I continue to do good to that pastor in spite of what he did to me. Why? Because I have one principle. I will treat people the way God treats me. Marami ako pagkukulang sa Diyos, but He will always bestow upon me the favor, the goodness, and the love. He, ay, hindi ko man masuklian yon in that kind of degree, but at least. Why? Because this is how I say, Lord, I want to honor you. Lord, I want to love you. How do we express that? It's easy to say, Lord, I want to love you. I want to, to you know, I want to honor you. How do you do that? By living the word of God. How many, then another pastor, okay? Narinig niya yung paninira sa akin, siniraan niya ako sa buong town. So nasira ako. Sabi ko siya, I don't mind being maligned or being slandered because I'm not after my reputation. Okay, I, 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 kun, ano, uh, hindi na ako nasasaktan dyan. Bakit? Sinerender ko na yung reputation ko eh. Ang importante yung character ko before God. Because that, yun lang ang dadaling ko pag harap ko sa Diyos eh. Yung character eh. Okay? So what happened? Siniraan niya ako. And then, yung pamangkin niya, tumawag sa akin. Sabi niya, Pastora, nabalitaan mo ba si Pastor? Ganun, ganun. O bakit? May sakit. Baka tulungan mo. Hindi alam ng pamangkin na sinsiraan na ako. Ah, okay, no problem. Napadala ako ng pera. Wala sa akin yun. Bakit? Reputation ko lang yun eh. Kasi baka sakali, sa kabutihan na ginasinusukli ang ko sa kasamaan niya, may mabago sa kanya. I'm after his transformation. I'm after ma-restore siya kay God. Hindi ako after sa name ko. How many times pag sinisiraan tayo, gaganti tayo? Bakit? It's all about self. Pero hindi eh. Do good. Kasi sabi niya, repay evil with good. Bakit? Habol mo. Ma-restore siya kay God. Hindi yung name mo. Let God build that. Bakit? Hindi naman natigil yung influence ko. Hindi naman natigil yung mission field ko. In fact, it's growing. So, no one can destroy the purpose of God in my life. Kahit sirain yung pangalan ko. Bakit? I will continue to do what God wants me to do. I'm not perfect. I have my struggles. I have my weaknesses. But at the end of the day, I will walk in His ways. I will keep charge of His uh, law. Why? Sabi, sabi kasi dyan, I believe it's in Zechariah. 
if you walk in my ways and keep charge of my uh, word, I will let you rule over my house and keep charge over my courts. And I will give you access to my presence to walk among those who stand there. Yun ang importante sa akin. Kaya sabi ko, Lord, sige, I will walk in your ways. Bakit? Because you are my exceedingly great reward. So makita mo mga kapatid, it is important that we do what God's word is. Sinasabi natin, we want to honor God, we want to, uh, we, we love God. How do we express that? By, you see, repaying evil with good. Okay? How many people have maligned me? And yet I still reach out to, this, to, to them. Hindi kasi ako nag-harbor ng bitterness eh. Hindi ako yung nag-dwell sa sama ng loob. So please, when you harbor bitterness, that's right. Let go. Di maling maargabyado ka. Ang kapalit niya si Lord. Maargabyado ka dahil siniraan ka. Hindi naargabyado ka dahil sa yung, alam mo yun, carelessness. So, that's, that's are my just few examples of how I, I was being treated during my mission trip. How many times I've been threatened na hindi ako allowed sa isang probinsya? Okay lang. Sige lang. But still, I'm after what? Pag hindi nako-conscious tayo, ay, ayoko na pumunta doon kasi sirang-sira na yung pangalan ko doon. Eh, pero sabi nila, pumunta ka doon. Eh, pangalan mo lang naman yun eh. Minsan, hindi ta natin magawa yung mga pinagagawa ng Panginoon. Dahil bakit? Nahiya tayo. Okay? So, what else? Alam mo, ang akala natin sa pride is arrogance. Alam mo ba kung mahiyain ka, pride yun? How many of you dito, hindi pa nakatanggap ng Himala sa Diyos? I believe everybody did. Okay? Have received a miracle. Siyempre, pag sinabi ko, sino dito ang nakatanggap ng Himala? Sino dito ang kumilos ang Panginoon sa buhay nyo? Siguro lahat kayo, tataas ang kamay. Tama? Pero pag sinabi ko, pwede ka pumunta sa harap at mag-testimony, walang pupunta. Bakit? Nahihiya. We miss out what we we supposed to share because nahihiya tayo. We're supposed to give glory to God. Kaya nga minsan, di ba, papuntahin mo lang sa harapan yung isang tao ano sabi, mag-testimony ka, ayoko, nahihiya ako. Mag-preach ka, ayoko, nahihiya ako. Normal yun, mahihiya ka. Kasi bakit? E first time mo may experience, tumayo sa harap ng tao eh. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Conscious ka na sarili mo. E pride is self-centeredness. Bakit hindi mo mag-glorify ang Diyos? Ba't hindi mo papasalamatan publicly? Sabi nga ng Panginoon, if you're ashamed of me, of me, then I will be ashamed of you before my father. So bakit tayo nahiya? Kasi yung opinion ng tao, conscious tayo. So importante po, huwag tayong mahihiya. Ako, I mean, there are times I'm struggling to speak before you with all my experience uh, and all these years of experience, uh, humaharap ako sa mga tao. Yes, nanlalamig din ako, especially sa mga conferences. Ang mga umuupo sa akin, mga bishop, mga may sinabi, mga, alam mo yon, may malalaki ministry. Eh, ano ba naman ako? Pero sinabi nila, stand. Hindi ko tinitignan yung sarili ko na less of them. You know what? I can command authority over them because I know it is God's will. You have authority. I want to glorify God. So sino sa atin dito? Pag sinabi ko, tumayo kayo ngayon, magbigay kayo ng testimony, hindi kayo tatayo, mahihiya kayo. Kaya nga minsan, di ba sa prayer, o ikaw mag-lead ng prayer, o si ano na lang, siguro, bakit? Wala bang mahugot ang Holy Spirit sa inyo? Baka hindi po natin sinasaliksik ang Diyos. Kaya importante po that we continue to really overcome our shyness. When God uh, commands us to share the gospel, to preach the gospel, yes, kakabahang ka, but do not be conscious of yourself. Be conscious of what God can do through you and what God can accomplish through you. Huwag tayo mahiya. Okay? So Proverbs 12.1. 
To learn, you must love discipline. It's too big to hate correction. Ayan, ang mga tao na pagka, oh, ano, pagka ayaw ng correction, hindi mo makorek. Yan, pride po yan. Especially, they're having a hard time submitting to the authority that is above them. Makes people assume that they are infallible. Resents correction and discipline. Sabi sa Proverbs 6.23, for the commandments is a lamp and the whole teaching of the law is light and reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Being a Christian, okay, makinig po ah, important ito. Being a Christian, discipline will be the way of our life. Bakit? Kasi kaya nga sabi ni Lord, the just shall live by faith. Ano connection nyo sa discipline? Ito po kasi ito, okay? Lahat tayo, Lumaki tayo, nakasanayan natin maraming bagay sa pag-uugali natin, sa paraanan natin, magulang natin, mga naturo sa atin, influence ng mga friends natin, influence the community, especially our family. Eh yun, mali yun sa harap ng Diyos. So ano gagawin ni Lord? So itidisiplin niya tayo pagka mali yung ways natin. Kaya nagkikreate yan ng mga maraming Pagsubok kasi kinukol yung attention natin. Example, okay? Uh, nasample ko na to many times. May isang pastor, mahilig mangutang. Okay? So, nagbaon siya sa utang. So, may nagsabi sa kanya, sa voice niya, sa, sa ears niya, punta ka sa kanto na to, ganitong oras, maghintay ka, may mag-aabot ng certain amount pambayad mo ng utang. Malaki Hindi siya naman, saya-saya niya. Punta siya sa kanto. Gabi na wala pa until finally he gave up. Di sabi niya, Lord, what happened? Bakit narinig kita? Magpo-provide ka pambayad ng utang. So, ang tagal, kayo, tagal sumagot si Lord, siguro a month. So finally, kinausap siya ni Lord. Sabi niya, anak, yung Ginawa mo, hindi ko kalooban. Disiplina ko sa'yo yan, hindi ako magpo-provide. Okay? I will help you to get out of that debt. Pero hindi ko ibibigay yan ng one time, big time. Kasi i-discipline kita until makorek yung ways mo. Kasi practice mo yan eh, umutang eh. Aalisin ko yung ways mo. So sabi sa word, the God will give little by little. Okay? So little by little, nabayaran niya. It took him two years. Okay? Kasi malaki eh. Kaya lang, every time may pera siya, a big chunk of that, itatabi niya pambayad. So, anong nangyari? Yung lifestyle nila, na-compromise, mas matipid. Bakit? Kasi yung bigger chunk ng pera nila, napupunta sa pambayad. So, may suffering. Bakit? Maraming hindi magawa at hindi mabili dahil kaunti ang natitira. Discipline ni Lord John. After two years, nakalaya na siya. Hindi na siya ng utang. Natutunan niya yung ways ng Diyos. So, discipline is the way of life. And discipline is a crossroad sa buhay natin. Are we going to allow God to correct us or bitter and turn our backs on God? Kaya nga sa Revelation, those who overcome the discipline of God will sit at my throne. Kaya a discipline is a way of life. Yung may mga mali tayo na kailangan, what? kailangan bitawan, kailangan iwan. That's why we live by faith. Why? Kasi ia-apply natin ang salita ng Diyos. Hindi na natin, iiwanan na natin yung nakasanayan natin. And it takes faith to believe and obey God's word. Kasi wala tayong nakikita pero ang hirap. Pero magtsatsaga tayo. Kaya nga kailangan steadfastness perseverance sa buhay ng Kristiyano because discipline is the way of life until we become aligned fully sa Word of God. Kaya nga, pag na-align tayo, our, in, our whole being is inclined towards the Word of God, ano nangyayari? Mas madaling sumunod. Dati nahirapan tayo sumunod, but this time, mas madaling sumunod. Bakit? Nabasag na yung kalooban mo, the stubborn will. Another example, di ba? Sabi ko nga sa corporate man, nagkaroon ng, ng uh, 
uh, celebration na, na, na invite siya ng boss niya. They had a one night stand. One night stand sa mga babae na na-table nila and then finally he got a STD, a disease, sexual disease. na nahawa niya yung wife niya it so happened pregnant and been waiting for six years for that child. Na nagkaroon siya ng miscarriage. So the marriage almost collapsed because of what, what he did. But he submitted himself to the Lord. Every gathering ng family, minamak siya ng side ng babae. Siyempre, kahiyan. Pero tinake niya yun. After seven years of mockery at humbling process, he submitted to God. And then what after that? God blessed them with four children. Why? It's a matter of our attitude, how we will respond to the discipline of God. Because God wants us to know His ways. Pag hindi tayo natututo, uulit tayo kaya maraming kristyano, hindi makaalis sa wilderness, hindi matutunan ang paraanan ng Diyos. At sinabi ng Diyos sa salita niya, Discipline is a way of life until we become rooted, richly dwelling in the Word of God. That's why we need to be what? To live by faith. Hindi mo naiintindihan. Masakit. Imagine yung pastor na yun, two years sila nagtiis ng tipid ng tipid, di sila gustong-gusto nila baby nila, masarap na sila at kumain ng sana, ganito ulam natin, di pwede. Nagtiis sila. And it affected the whole family. Remember, our decision, our actions will affect our family. Kaya importante magpadisiplina tayo dahil pag natapos naman, pati ang pamilya natin giginhawa ang buhay. Pride cannot submit to authority. Kaya nga may disunity sa ministry. Bakit hindi kaya mag, ano, mag-submit? Family and relationship. Bakit mag, hindi magkaisa ang pamilya? Kasi pinaglalaban mo ang karapatan mo. Alisin mo yung karapatan mo. And even relationship. Lack of submission is a symptom of pride. Luke 22, 49-51. When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, Should we strike with our swords? It was the time that Jesus was being arrested. And one of them struck a servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Now, this very verse, God spoke to me. Kasi inaano siya, inaaresto siya. Eh, itong si Paul, si Paul, si Peter. Si Peter po itong kasama ni Jesus Christ na nagputol ng tenga na itong soldier. Imagine, mga kapatid, Jesus Christ, okay? Inaaresto siya. Inabot niya yung tenga ng soldier. Anong risk nun? Pwede siyang patayin eh. Pwede siyang, oy, kasi alam mo yun, the soldiers saw him as a criminal kasi inaaresto siya eh. But he continued to reach out the man's ear and healed him. That act, the Lord opened my understanding. Sabi niya, Grace, you know that one act? You see, sometimes one verse and one, ano, one sentence, the Lord will really open your understanding. Eh. Sabi niya, He touched the man's ear and healed him. So, ano pinakita sa akin ni Lord dito? You're willing to take risk for that person to be healed. Kahit anong tingin sa'yo ng tao. Bakit? Bakit sinabi sa akin to ni Lord? Kasi sabi ko, Lord, there are many times that I will give my testimony. Sabi niya, Grace, your testimony will help a lot of people. Will heal them, will give deliverance, will enlighten them, even at your expense, that they will look at you as a failure or as a weak person. Yun po yung ibig sabihin nun, yung revelation na yun. Are we willing to reach out? And give our personal testimony for the sake of others, even if people look at us as a failure. Look at us as weak. Look at us what? Wala pa lang kwenta to. Wala pa lang ano to. You see? There are times we cannot give our testimony. Dali hiya tayo. Ano isipin ng tao? Maybe they will look at me ganito, ganyan. Especially now I have medical condition. There are comments na, Oy, may, baka, baka bitter ka, kaya ka nagkasakit sa puso. Baka kasi ganito, ganyan, ganyan ka. Ang daming baka. Kaya sabi ko, ano ba yan? Ang daming 
baka, okay? Pusa, be, pwede. So, you see, mga kapatid, we're not willing to look like a failure because we have pride. But that is one thing, you know, when we have weaknesses, I, I always say, Lord, this is my weakness, this, this is my you know, medical condition. People look down on me because of my medical condition. I don't mind because my testimony touched lives. And they come to know the goodness of God because I gave my testimony. You see, I'm willing to reach out. He touched the man's ear and healed him. He took the risk. Are you willing to take the risk? To take the risk of giving your money? Taking the risk of going out? Kasi may COVID, hindi tayo makareach out. Are you willing to take the risk for others to hear the gospel? A shy person will not make himself vulnerable and very careful, protects himself. What if I make a mistake? What if I'm criticized? I might be humiliated. Pride could be at the root of certain kinds of fears. Pride is very protective of self. Jesus, our captain, however, was humble and vulnerable and was willing to look like a failure. Mga kapatid, are you conscious of what people will look, how look at you? And you cannot reach out to others? Kasi I'm weak, you know, mayroon pa akong ganitong issue. Puro issue na lang. Kailan ka? Hintayin mo maging perfect ka? Ano yung kukunin ka na ni Lord? Pag nasdoon ka na, perfect ka na. Wala ka na. No way to serve God. You say overcome everything. Don't be conscious. Pride can be at the bottom of embarrassment or even shyness. Yun yung sinasabi ko. You may be shy. Don't be shy. Pride is a concentration upon me, my will, my ideas, what I want, and it pushes God off the throne. Pride resists God and the will of God in order to exalt self instead. Pride is at the root of all sin because it displaces God and puts self upon the throne. Man's greatest problem is this, I am my own bo boss. The essence of Christianity is transformation, the essence of sin is I'll do it my way. I run my life, not God. As our Father and Creator, God desires to be inquired of and put into everything we do. Pride is self-centeredness. Bawas po tayo, ha? Malapit pa ako matapos. Self-sufficient and self-seeking. We cannot experience the fullness of God if we are full of ourselves. We only depend on God if our plan fails. We use God as a last resort instead of first. Remember, Moses, he wrote Genesis up to the general uh, Deuteronomy. He wrote that Moses was the meekest man the whole world. Maraming mga commentary sabi, it is a statement of pride because he wrote about himself. No, I disagree. Why? Because in Exodus 33, sinabi niya, Lord, if you will not go with us, I will not leave this place. It only expresses his full dependency on God. That is what? Humility. When pride is self-centeredness, self-sufficiency, and self-seeking, then humility is depending on God more and more. That's why, when I saw this revelation, Lord, oh, nga, no, marami nagsasabi mayabang si Moses because of he wrote that. But you see, Exodus 33, show it otherwise. Because sabi niya, if you will not go with us, I will not leave this place. It shows, expresses his full dependency. That's why, when God gave me this revelation, sabi ko, Lord, I do not want to be self-sufficient. I only want to be dependent on you. I am independent from man, but dependent on God. I will not depend on man, but dependent on God. Kaya mga kapatid, you deepen your dependency on the Lord when you allow yourself not to be self-sufficient. Kaya nga, three things ang sabi ng Panginoon. The sabi may nagsabi, three things you have to ask. Not to be exalted, not to be esteem, not to be esteemed, not to be secured, and not to be in control. When you're not in control, God will take over 
we will be in control. And that's our struggle. We want to control our situation. We want to control our finances. And we cannot what? Depend on God. Kaya nga, ang pinakatakot ng tao, mawalan ng pera. Because when you have money, you control. But when you lose money, you have no control. Si Lord ang may sagot sa'yo. That's why when I ask for that, I begin to lose what I used to control. And I, wala ko problema not to be esteemed, okay sa akin yun. But to be, lose control and to be secure, that is very hard. Kaya I always want, I ask God, Lord, let me depend on you. If I lose this, then I will be in a better place because it is you who will take care of me. I may be shaking at times. I may be fearful at times. But I know I'm standing on the rock. Nothing will make me fall. Christ wants us to be free from ourselves and from self-centeredness in order that we might become his lovely bride without spot or blemish. Christ is not self-centered, nor will he be wedded to a bride who is self-centered. He became the last Adam and won back everything the first Adam lost. The first Adam was self-centered. The last Adam was other-centered. A servant and totally unselfish. Becoming a servant like Jesus is the key to overcoming self-centeredness and becoming his bride. John 7, 18. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks is the glory of one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness in him. The word that translated glory in this verse could have been translated recognition. So let's read it that way. He who speaks from himself seeks his own recognition, but he who is seeking the recognition of the one who sent him, he is true, and there's no unrighteousness in him. We all must want focus to seek the recognition of God, not others. James 4, 6, but he gives more grace Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Remember, Satan is used to dealing with proud people, but a hard time dealing with humble people. You get to choose where you want to be. God bless you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your message. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation. Thank you for teaching us your ways. May we not be heroes of the word, but be doers of your word, O God. May we apply this, O God, be... Lord, adjust our lifestyle according to your word because it is you alone who, who has the moral authority to determine what is right and wrong. May we embrace your discipline and correction that we may continue to walk with you and grow spiritually. Be filled with the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and rich spiritual maturity. Lord, we want to be counted as your bride and we wanted, oh God, to rule in this life so that, Lord, when your kingdom is established, we will rule and reign with you as well. Father, I thank you for your grace in my life. I thank you, oh God, for my strength, for your power and anointing about my life that I was able to finish the message. Thank you, oh God, for my healing. Thank you, oh God, for everything that you will do in the lives of your people this week. Lord, as your servant, I decree and declare that you will bless your people with your presence, with your revelation, with greater degree of your light, that they will continue to see life, O oh God, light in their life, O oh God, and that your may face shine upon them. Bestow upon us, O oh Lord, your beauty, your delightfulness, and your favor, and thank you that you will confirm and establish the works of my hands. Father, I give you praise, the glory, the honor, the majesty, for you deserve all this. No one is like you. Father, thank you for your love, thank you for your goodness, and thank you for your blessings. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.